I'm Ed Augustus, Worcester City Manager. Uh, welcome to the water filtration plant in Holden. Uh, this is one of Worcester's six reservoirs. Uh, today, in How Worcester Works, we're going to explore how the water behind me actually goes through the water filtration plant here in Holden and comes out the other end in your tap uh, for clean, healthy drinking water. It's an amazing process, a lot more complicated and sophisticated than any of us might have assumed but really essential to making sure that all of Worcester's people have access to that great quality drinking water. And now we're going to take a tour of the facility with plant manager Darren Laflamme. Well, we're back here in the control room, uh, and it was a little loud in there, so I wanted to ask you some of the questions I was asking you when we were going on the tour so the folks watching uh, can get all that interesting information. So just first, how many gallons are we talking about in the reservoir itself? We have a series of 10 reservoirs that are in five area towns, including Worcester. Worcester, Holden, Paxton, Princeton, Leicester, and Rutland and they can hold up to, when they're full, 7.3 billion gallons of water. 7.3 billion gallons. And it has to do to the foresight of the city in the past, 100 years ago, getting water rights to these reservoirs to ensure that today the city has a, a plentiful supply for our needs. Right. And you were saying that how much of that uh, would be brought through the filtration plant on any given day? An average is about 24 to 25 thousand million gallons per day. In the summertime, that demand will go up to 30 million gallons per day. In the wintertime, it'll drop down to about 21 million gallons per day. Okay. So at the height of it, it can be, we can handle 50 million gallons per day um, if there was a really heightened demand. Correct. The plant <clears throat> was designed for a maximum capacity of 50 million gallons per day. And any water that the citizens of Worcester are using comes through this filter plant, right? That is correct. So not only your drinking water, but the water you use for your shower, the water you use for your dishwasher or your washing machine or to water your lawn. Fire is coming. Correct. Fire hydrants are all coming through the same filtration plant. Correct. They're, it's all filtered. It's all the same drinking water quality. Uh -huh. yep. And the overall budget, I understand, for the plant uh, is about $40 million. I uh, believe that's for the entire uh, water, water department system. for the yeah. city. And so the, obviously, this is part of a bigger system. Uh, do you want to just talk a little bit about what else goes into the system? So it's one thing to take the water out of the reservoirs and treat it, and then it's another thing to get it to the places where it needs to be. Well, we have 650 miles of water mains, I believe, in the city of Worcester. And that's the whole separate department in charge of the pump stations. We have pump stations and tanks throughout the city. The pump stations are pumping water to higher elevations where the water is stored in tanks so that they have water pressure at higher elevation neighborhoods throughout mm -hmm. the city. So if anybody's ever gone to Green Hill Park or to the Worcester Technical High School and you saw that big uh, water tank up there, that really is designed to make sure there's appropriate water pressure. Correct. About one third of the water in the city is gravity fed into the southern part of the city, the lower elevation area, but it's the city of Seven Hills. That explains the right. water storage tanks on top of the hills around the city to always ensure adequate water pressure at people's homes. Yep. And so there's a system, obviously, of pipes and valves uh, underneath the street so that the city to make sure that the water can get to the appropriate places. Now, is there one main uh, pipe that leads out of the filtration plant to a network of other pipes, or are there multiple pipes that There's lead one out? large pipe leaving the filtration plant under the access road going down to the clear wells. Those are the storage tanks just down the street from us, and they hold 5.5 million gallons of water. Wow. And that's how big is that pipe that's transmitting all of that water? I believe it's water? a 54-inch pipe. 54-inch pipe. 60-inch pipe, pipe, I believe. <clears throat> wow. So it's a big pipe. Uh, and so it goes into these various storage tanks uh, that store, at any given time, about 5 million gallons of five clean, five. filtrated water ready to go wherever it's needed. Correct. And now that I'm thinking, I think there are actually two pipes leaving the water filtration plant. I think they're both 54 inches. Okay. Now, obviously, when we walk through the filtration plant, it's a very sophisticated system, and there's 
185,000 citizens and tens of thousands more who are in Worcester working or going to school on any given day. How do we make sure that if something goes wrong with one part of the plant, uh, that people still have access to drinking water or our fire hydrants still have access to the water they need uh, to deal with the fire? Well, that goes back to when the plants are designed. They're designed to always be able to supply water to the city for those health and safety concerns. There's redundancy everywhere. You saw the four ozone generators? Well, the maximum we ever need is three, so there's always one on standby, ready to be used if one of the others has a mechanical problem. Mm -hmm. If it does, we can repair that one while the other three are running. And that's kind of the design philosophy everywhere throughout the plant. Redundancy so that we can always meet our water demands. And so the plant is really designed as a mirror of itself, right? Correct. So that, uh, adding to your point about redundancy, right. uh, there's a backup to everything that, that is done here. Yes. So that nothing, Worcester would never be without fresh, clean water. Uh, Correct. No matter the circumstances. When we had the ice storm about five years ago, we had no power here at the filtration plant for 11 days. Mm. And we were able to run independently where there are emergency generators supplying all of our power needs. Wow. So a lot of thought goes into making sure that the city always has a consistent, safe, clean water supply. And so how many people does it take to run a filtration plant like this, uh, you know, that 185,000 people rely on every day? I believe that the water department for the city of Worcester has 130 employees, and 17 of those are out here at the filtration plant, ensuring the consistent, safe, clean water. So only 17 people are handling 50,000 gallons of water, making sure it's filtered and appropriately treated and put back out to, for the use of the people of Worcester. Correct, 50 million gallons, yes, and that's thanks gallons. to computers. Yeah, and, and do you want to talk a little bit about the system of, uh, in this control room, how you monitor what's going on at any given place? Because you can monitor not only what's going on here at the filtration plant, but you can monitor if we have a a valve leak or a pipe break someplace uh, within the city of Worcester. Correct. <clears throat> well, this is what allows us to get by with only two water filtration plant operators on staff 24-7. Any time of the day, there are two operators on. This is called a SCADA system, or a supervisory control and data acquisition. All those instrumentation we saw around the filtration plant, all that data is being brought up to here, right at our fingertips, so we can see exactly what's happening. We have trends on screens that show us at a glance if something is departing from a normal operating parameter. You can see the bottom of that screen has tank levels around the city and shows us which pumps are running. We have things alarmed so that if things fall outside of a normal tolerance range, an audible alarm sounds that will warn the operators to investigate. They can't be in the control room 24-7, they have other chores to do. So everything is automated that if something falls outside of a tolerance range that reestablish, it's going to let them know to check on it. So I see here it has the airport tank. So there's Correct. a tank at, uh, near the airport, yep. and you can monitor how many gallons of water in that tank. So if there was a breach or compromise in that tank, an alarm would sound here, and then you could stop the flow of water to the tank and then deal with fixing the tank if necessary. Is that right? That's correct. We can monitor the low service flow directly, that one third of the water that's flowing to the lower, lower elevation part of the city. And if there's a spike in that flow, it's alarmed and we know about it right away. The other flows are high service and there we look for a quick increase in how fast the tanks are emptying. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we have kind of a hybrid system in the sense that we have a very sophisticated system that has all this technology and this monitoring, but yet some of our pipes are 100 years old that the water actually flows through. How do we balance those two systems, uh, you know, really on the cutting edge and still, you know, more than 100 year old infrastructure? Well, that's a challenge that the water industry as a whole is facing throughout the country, is um, trying to keep up with updating your mains so that it doesn't all come to a head at once where it's going to cost millions and millions of dollars to invest all at one time. And the city does a great job of trying to keep up with their maintenance work, uh, relining pipes, relaying mains, so that if they keep at it a little bit each year, they never go run into that one year where there's a huge investment needed yep. to keep up with the demands. So that's the, the secret really, doing your preventative maintenance and trying to make sure that you're doing things as proactively as possible so you have to do a lot less reactive kind Correct. of maintenance. Yep. You know. And 
How many hours a week is the filtration plant op operating? The plant's always running 24-7. 24-7. So midnight on Christmas Eve, there are folks who are here making sure that they're monitoring the water supply, making sure that the plant is functioning uh, properly, as well as our whole water system throughout the city. Correct. Well, I can speak firsthand. I was a senior operator for 14 years. In Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, Christmas Day, there are dedicated operators yeah. here uh, doing their job and making sure that the water is flowing and the water is top quality. I, I often say that's one of the things that people don't always realize. We take for granted when you go and you know turn the tap on and get a clean glass of water or take a shower or, or use water for your everyday needs that there are people on the job 24-7 making sure that you have the ability to get that clean water uh, and that you don't really have to think twice about it. You have that luxury. And, there are people around the world uh, who water is really a life or death matter. Uh, and here in Worcester, um, you know, we're very fortunate that we have the professional staff and the infrastructure and the foresight of the leaders of the community a hundred years ago in terms of acquiring the um, water supply and protecting it. Because that's part of what we do. And I know just recently we acquired some additional land to make sure there's a good strong buffer around our uh, reservoirs to make sure there'll never be any development uh, and we can keep the water as clean and pristine and as pre protected as possible for the people of Worcester now and in, in the future. Yeah, and that's part of the process is a conservation around the reservoirs. The city is always trying to accumulate new land to buffer the reservoirs from use around them and um, that's part of we have our ongoing water quality efforts. There's a security staff that's constantly driving around the reservoirs protecting them from an authorized use. It's, it's a process. Yeah. And what, what about the quality of Worcester's water? Um, you know, I've always found it to be first quality, but how does it stack up to water quality in other cities and towns in Massachusetts or around the country? Well, the city of Worcester was recently honored with the award of a large system of the year by the New England Water Works Association for Massachusetts. Our drinking water is as clean as it gets. So the, our cleaning, our water is as clean as anywhere in the United States. There's no community that has a cleaner drinking water supply than we do right here in the city of Worcester. That's correct. Yeah. That's Thanks correct. to this state-of-the-art filtration plant and the dedicated staff behind yeah. it. Our water is as clean as it gets. Yeah.